Overwatch is a game with many unique and diverse heroes, each of which fill a certain role on the team such as tank, support, sniper, defense or offense. So far I've had the chance to spend quite a bit of time learning how to play each character in the game. So in this video I'm going to give you my opinion on the top 10 most fun heroes in Overwatch. Bear in mind that this is a totally subjective list and there's a very good chance you won't agree with me. Number 10, Farah. Farah is an ex-military soldier from Egypt who uses the Raptora Mark VI combat suit that allows her to rain death from above with her rocket launcher. As an offense hero, she's really effective outside in open areas that allow her to use her jump jet and hover above unsuspecting enemies. Her E ability, Concussive Blast, is used as a knockback. It can also be used to distance herself from a target by firing out the ground in front of her. Farah's Q ability, Barrage, launches a continuous volley of mini rockets in front of her and can quickly kill multiple enemies standing close to each other. This is really effective in clearing control points or enemies escorting the payload. Despite what you may think, playing Farah is actually quite a challenge as you need to predict your enemy's movements for your rockets to connect. She's also extremely vulnerable to snipers when she uses her ultimate, so you need to know the right time to strike. Despite me being quite awful at playing Farah, I always consider her as a really fun hero to play. She's great at getting into the enemy backline by flying over them, she can deal a ton of overall damage, and it always feels really satisfying to get long range kills with her rockets. Number 9, Lucio. Lucio is a famous musician and freedom fighter from Brazil that uses one of the coolest weapons I've seen in an FPS, a subspeaker that fires sound waves. As a support hero, I find Lucio to be particularly effective on the offense, as he has great mobility, can help out his team with a decent amount of damage, has the ability to give his teammates a speed boost, as well as providing passive healing to anyone that's nearby. To new players, Lucio may seem like a confusing character to play at first, but don't worry. Once you've figured everything out, he's not that hard. Lucio's shift ability switches his passive from healing to speed boost, or vice versa, which is shown just beneath your crosshair, as well as a number that indicates the amount of friendly targets in range of you that are currently receiving the benefit of your passive. His E ability basically enhances the effectiveness of his healing or speed boost mode for a limited amount of time. His right click is a close range knockback and his Q ability provides everyone around him with temporary shields that rapidly decrease. If you jump next to a wall you'll also do a wall ride with your roller skates which is also really cool. Lucio is by far my favourite support hero in the game. I love the mobility he brings, the effectiveness of his ultimate which is amazing at helping your team push and just how cool he feels to play in general. Number 8, Junkrat. Junkrat is an Australian demolition fanatic and scavenger who uses a grenade launcher to blow his enemies to pieces. In terms of personality, this guy is easily my favourite hero in the game, as some of the things he says just makes me smile. I found him to be one of the most effective heroes in fighting tanky teams, and I play him on both offence and defence. As a defence hero, Junkrat is rather simple to play. His E ability sets a trap that when triggered leaves his enemy unable to move for 3 seconds. His left shift throws a triggered knockback mine that can be detonated with your right click. You can also use this mine to boost yourself into hard to reach areas or just create distance between you and your target. Junkrat's Q ability allows you to take control of a remote controlled explosive tyre. Just bear in mind that when controlling this tyre, your character is vulnerable to attack and the tyre can be blown up by the enemy before it reaches them. So I'd recommend using it when you're safely out of sight and your enemies are just around the corner. Junkrat gets number 8 on this list because it's just so fun to pepper the enemy team with grenades. I'm always waiting for moments in the match where everyone's grouped up on the objective and I can throw all my explosives at them. I think one of Junkrat's main advantages is that he can deal a lot of damage whilst being completely out of sight of the enemy if you know how to angle your grenades right. Oh, and if you do kill Junkrat, then you better watch out. He drops a ton of grenades that will kill you if you're standing on him when he dies. Number 7, Hanzo. Hanzo is a bowman and assassin from Japan that snipes his enemies from long range with his bow. As a sniper, Hanzo is a character that takes quite a bit of skill to play, and if your positioning isn't good, you'll easily find yourself dying to attackers at close range. One of the big differences of picking a Hanzo instead of a Widowmaker is your arrows take time to travel, meaning you can predict your enemy's movements and peek corners without them even getting a chance to hit you. 
you'll also have much better awareness of what's going on around you as you won't be spending a lot of time looking down your scope like Widowmaker, giving you much better medium to close range vision. In terms of abilities, Hanzo is pretty simple to play. You can climb walls by running up to them and jumping, your left shift ability activates recon on an arrow that reveals enemies near a certain location, and your E ability splits your arrow into multiple ricochet arrows on impact. If none of that impresses you though, Hanzo's Q ability is easily one of the coolest and most powerful ultimates in the game. His arrow fires a dragon spirit that kills everyone in its path that doesn't get out of the way. This will even one hit tanks and can be fired through the wall. This ability is crazy effective at clearing objectives and I've seen many Hanzo ultimates wipe out entire teams. I myself really enjoy Hanzo because it feels extremely satisfying to get kills with him just because of how accurate you need to be to hit your target. Number 6 Genji Genji is the brother of Hanzo and was once thought to be dead after his brother tried to kill him. He was found by Overwatch and saved from death by turning him into a cyborg with superhuman speed and agility. Genji looks and plays like a true ninja should. His primary weapons are ninja stars in which he throws three at a time. These ninja stars deal huge damage, especially if all three connect with your target. Genji is a great hero to use to disrupt the enemy team by sneaking behind them and taking them out at medium to close range. As an offense hero, I'd say Genji is one of the more difficult to play, but he's incredibly fun if you play to his strengths. His E ability is great when taking on enemies 1v1 as it allows you to deflect incoming projectiles in the direction you're aiming, which means you can essentially kill enemies with their own attacks. His shift ability allows him to quickly dash forward with his sword and damage enemies. The cooldown of this ability is reset every time you get a kill. Genji's right click is best for close range fights against an opponent that is strafing, as it spreads the area of your ninja stars making it really hard to avoid taking damage. Genji's Q ability summons his Dragon Blade Sword which will kill most enemies with two melee attacks and lasts for 8 seconds. Finally being the cyborg assassin that he is, Genji can of course double jump and climb walls. This with his fast movement speed gives him all the mobility he needs to get behind the enemy team and deal some serious damage. I love playing Genji because it feels like he has the tools to deal with a lot of situations, and it seems like most enemies are quite scared of him at close range. Number 5 Roadhog Roadhog is a 48 year old bodyguard from Australia who's easily my favourite tank character to play in Overwatch. He just feels like a true meat shield and I've found him to be pretty effective at getting a lot of kills too. Roadhog uses a scrap gun as his primary weapon and a hook as his secondary, both of which feel really impactful and fun to use. Roadhog's E ability heals him for 300 health and is on an 8 second cooldown. His left click fires his scrap gun with a short range spread and his right click fires his scrap gun with a medium range spread. His shift is used to hook enemies towards him from medium range, whilst hooked enemies can't attack and it seems to interrupt a lot of abilities, even ultimates. I absolutely love Roadhog because it feels so damn satisfying to pull off a long range hook and scrap gun combo on enemies. It always catches them off guard and 90% of the time they'll die from it. Roadhog's ultimate Q ability also looks visually awesome. He essentially turns his scrap gun into a machine gun that peppers enemies with scrap for 6 seconds, knocking them back and dealing damage in the process. Personally, I've never enjoyed being a tank in any game, MMOs, MOBAs or FPS games, but playing Roadhog feels different to me. I feel equally as helpful in dealing damage as I do in taking damage, and just being right on the front lines hooking enemy players to their deaths is so satisfying that I'll always happily switch to Roadhog if my team's in need of a tank. Number 4 Widowmaker Widowmaker is a 33 year old assassin from France that uses an automatic assault rifle which can turn into a sniper rifle as her primary weapon. As someone that's played a lot of FPS games in the past, I've always been the one to fill the role of sniper. There's just something I find really satisfying about killing people with one shot to the head from long range, and with Widowmaker, that's no different. What I love about Widowmaker as a sniper is her ability to escape dangerous situations using her shift ability, which launches a grappling hook that will pull her to the nearest ledge that she's aiming at. I always try to keep an escape route in mind when playing this hero. If a tracer tried to sneak up on you, the only way you'll survive is if you get a lucky shot or you escape with your grappling hook. Widowmaker's E ability launches a poisonous mine that will deal damage over time to anyone that steps on it. I'd recommend placing this near doorways. Her left click fires her automatic assault rifle whilst her right click turns it into a sniper rifle. I'd recommend waiting for your sniper's power to fully charge to 100% before firing a shot, 
because it will deal much more damage and kill most enemies with one shot to the head. Widowmaker's Q ability is one of the most useful team support abilities in the game. It basically reveals where the entire enemy team is for around 16 seconds, displaying them as infrared when behind walls. This ultimate pairs well with many other heroes, especially Farah, as it allows her to time her rockets much more effectively. Overall, a great sniper hero that's always a welcome addition to any team. Number 3, Tracer. Tracer is a hero that pretty much everyone has heard of. She's basically the face of Overwatch and she's also one of my favourite heroes in the game. As an offence hero, she's the most annoying character to go up against, as she'll outmanoeuvre and confuse you until she tickles you to death with her dual pulse pistols. These pistols, whilst weak at long range, become much more effective at close range, so you'll often find Tracer sneaking behind your team to cause as much distraction as possible, picking off a few unsuspecting players along the way. Tracer is a really simple hero to play, but due to her tiny 150 health pool, you need to play smart if you want to do well. Her left shift is called Blink, which basically teleports you in the direction you're moving. You can blink in all directions, even diagonally. Her E ability Recall enables Tracer to move back in time by a few seconds to her previous location and health. And with this being on a relatively short cooldown, using this as a heal can give Tracer great sustain. Her Q ability Pulse Bomb throws out a powerful sticky explosive. I most enjoy using this on tanks though, especially Reinhardt as people tend to group up behind him. I find Tracer a lot of fun because of her mobility. Enemy players tend not to chase you because they know they stand no chance, and it's just fun being the annoying distraction sometimes. Number 2, Reaper. Reaper is a mercenary whose identity and motives remain a mystery. He's also the most badass and deadly hero at close range in the game. He actually reminds me a lot of Neo from The Matrix. Reaper uses two Hellfire shotguns that each have a clip size of four shots. Whilst rather weak at medium to long range, they can destroy anyone in seconds at close range. Reaper is one of the easier heroes in Overwatch to play and I found myself enjoying him the most when I first started playing. He does however take quite a bit of thought to master though. Reaper's E ability allows him to teleport to a target location. This is really effective in helping him get behind the enemy. His shift ability puts him in Wraith form which basically gives him a speed boost and makes him invulnerable to damage for 3 seconds. During this time though you can't attack so I'd recommend using this either defensively to help you escape or offensively to close the gap between you and your target. Reaper's ultimate Q ability Death Blossom will kill anyone within short range of you and can wipe out entire teams if you pull it off undetected. It's a high risk high reward ultimate because it involves you getting right in the middle of the enemy team and it's easily countered if they spot you quickly. Passively Reaper can self heal by collecting the souls of dead enemies giving him pretty decent sustain. Whilst I always have a great time playing Reaper, I usually only switch to him during parts of the map that are more close quarters, as that's where he succeeds the most. In large open areas though, he's not that effective. Number 1, McCree. McCree is a 37 year old bounty hunter from New Mexico that uses a Peacekeeper 6 shooter. Looking at him for the first time, you may think to yourself, whoa, when did Blizzard get the rights to put Clint Eastwood in their game? Jokes aside, McCree is the hero I've had the most fun with so far in this game. I've found him to be both a good offense and defense hero that can deal a ton of damage both at short and medium range. McCree is one of the more difficult offense heroes. Due to your weapon only having 6 shots before needing to reload, you need to make those shots count. McCree's left shift ability will make him do a combat roll and reload his weapon in the direction he's moving. His E ability throws a flashbang that will stun enemies in front of him for one second, and his right click will rapidly fire the remaining shots in his weapon. This is only worth using at close range though. McCree is a really effective close range hero and can even beat Reaper in a 1v1 situation if you play it right. What you want to do is use your combat roll to get close to your enemy, immediately throw a flashbang and unload your gun into them with your right click. This should kill all non-tank heroes as long as your shots don't miss, and I think it's one of the most satisfying combos in the game to pull off. McCree's Q ability Deadeye is capable of wiping out entire teams and often gets play of the game. After a few seconds he'll line up all enemies within his sights and insta-kill them all with headshots. This is really easily countered though by hiding every time you hear a McCree character say, It's high noon. 
Overall, McCree is a hero that I didn't initially enjoy, but after playing him for a while, he's easily the one that I've had the most fun playing. It feels really rewarding to get kills with his weapon, he has a ton of personality, and his abilities combo together nicely. So that's it for this video guys, if you've had the chance to play Overwatch then let me know your favourite hero so far in the comments below. Additionally if you haven't played Overwatch then let me know what hero you find the most interesting. I hope you enjoyed the video, you take it easy and I'll see you again really soon.